good. Bitch, get it from us again. What if we run out? What if she does it again and we can't find them? What are you worried about that for now? Because we need more. What if we run, run out? I know. But the radio says there's more coming soon. What's that have to say today? Probably the same as yesterday. The day before. We'll find out later. I remember the first time I met Emily. We just got redeployed from Southern Illinois to Dubuque. She was scavenging one of the abandoned houses when we found her. On December 24th, 2029, Chinese communists launched an EMP attack that completely decimated the US power grid, followed by 10 million foreign troops landing on the beaches of California and Oregon. They dropped pamphlets and used fake radio broadcasts to confuse and divide us. Hi, I'm Emily. Hi, I'm Lieutenant Rogers, this is Private Johnson, this is Staff Sergeant Brown, and that is Second Lieutenant Price. So where are you from, if you're not from here? I was living in Oxford, Mississippi when the blackout started. Is there any chance you had a fire going? Um, no, but do you mind if I ask you some questions? Sorry, we don't have much time. We saw the smoke from the fire, and that's why we came here. Uh, no, that wasn't me. Well, um, let's keep moving. Miss, we're headed to Dubuque. You're more than welcome to join us. There's reports of enemy paratroopers landing east of the Mississippi, and uh, if that's the case, these parts may not be the safest right now. Oh, thank you, but I'm heading northeast to Oshkosh. The one thing that had changed the most since the attack were the streets. All were as empty as the last, not filled with crowds cheering us on as we imagined when we were drafted. It almost felt good to run into a civilian because it made the world feel normal again even if only for a fleeting moment. But it wasn't always like this. Just after the EMP hit, you never saw so many people in your life all happy to help one another. But then as time went on, once the panic started, each day you'd see fewer and fewer civilians until one day. We didn't see anyone at all. We were alone then, day in, day out. The music had stopped. Well, definitely not uh, enemy paratroopers. What do you see? Yeah, it looks like a family. A mom, a dad. How old is the dad? Draft age? Yeah, he looks like he's in his 40s. But he has a family. A family he'll be fighting to protect. So it's settled then? Yeah, it's settled. He's drafted. Breaking the door, Johnson.
taking these weird sounds. Follow my lead. We need to capture and interrogate the one that jumped up on him. This is it, man. Give this to my mom and dad. Tell them I love them. I always have. And I always will. Snap out of it, man! What the fuck is wrong with these people? We gotta make sure we're still not in danger. Yeah, I know, I know. Come on, man, take the gun. Fuck it, I know, I know. Come on. Let's go. go. College girl from the town. Let me check and see what she's doing here. I'll see to this. He's, He's dead. What are you doing here? I heard gunfire. You heard gunfire and he came running? Well, I didn't want to spend the night here in this town if it's not safe. It's not safe here. You gotta get out of here. What the hell happened here? The little girl's gone. What do you mean she's gone? I mean, I looked under the table after you walked outside. She's gone. The what girl? We came to this house and the people who lived here attacked us. It's not that simple. They weren't normal. I mean, hell, they weren't even human. What do you mean? We don't have time to explain. We gotta find this girl and find out what's happening. Ready? Let's do it. What did you mean earlier when you said they didn't sound human? 
They were just crazy people, that's all. They just knocked on the wrong door. What about that girl? He said she didn't want to come with him. For... For... For she shot herself? Yeah. I just, uh... I don't, I don't understand how a kid can take a gun. <laughs> you know? No, it sounded like you were abusing her before we got here. Who knows what's been going on here since the blackout started? It just doesn't add up. That's all. You know, I've been thinking. Maybe you should join us. You mean the army? No, not join the military. Just, uh, just join us. You know, there's safety in numbers. Who knows how many people like them are out there. And after what we just saw, maybe it's not safe to travel alone. So, uh, here's what I'm thinking. hundred miles north of here is a town in northwest Illinois called Freeport. Right now most of the units that were redeployed when they blew up the bridges on the Mississippi River are meeting there at the National Guard Armory before heading west to Dubuque. Now, if you're going to Oshkosh, you can join us up until Freeport and maybe one of those units will be heading up north or we can find you an escort to Madison at least. Okay. Guys, I think I'm going to I'm gonna go start digging the graves. Can you find me something to mark them with? Once the war's over and the power's back on, we're gonna to need to come back here, collect the remains, and uh, give them a proper burial. Can you guys go get the bodies? I'm gonna start digging. two weeks after the lights went out and one told us that the Chinese and Russian had invaded, so uh, Bill and I had joined up. No formal training, we just kind of learned as we went along. And the Bill was one of the ones that was shot? Yeah. You know, uh, Bill and I have been friends since uh, high school. We have no idea how I'm gonna tell his mother, his uh, father, his, uh, his brother and sister that uh, he's uh, <clears throat> hey, uh, why don't you help me move these bodies in the bedroom? You know, when I was stationed in southern Illinois, in a town called uh, Cairo, one of the uh, platoons that was doing reconnaissance in the Rocky Mountains came through and told us how the Chinese were getting people in Colorado to eat these things and it was making them sick. Sick how? They didn't go into detail. You know, just a few words in passing. Yeah, my soldier told me earlier what price I'll be back in that town. Why not take the bars? Yeah. Maybe they've been poisoned with something. Maybe. They've been uh dropping those radios from the air too. trying to get people to head west. What? Well, rumors are they're forcing people into re-education camps and forced labor camps. Yeah. You know, there's even rumors that they've uh, convinced American citizens to fight on the front lines. Now, maybe that's what happened to this family. You know, if uh, 
They were just coming back from one of those re-education camps or listened to so much misinformation and thought we were the enemy. Should we take this radio with us just in case? No. I don't think we should take anything from these people. That'll just bring bad luck. You know, we've taken enough from them already. Now I'd put everything back where we found it. Anyway, I think we found everything we need, so let's find some rocks to use as headstones and make some headway before dark. I thought I heard something. Be ready. Looks like they weren't wearing any shoes. Weird. You there! Identify yourself! <laughs> You saw it. Just like the people in the farmhouse. Are you okay? What the hell happened? I don't know. I was just, I was just standing here and then he, he came up behind me and grabbed my backpack. Looks like he was looking for food. That's the bar that was in the house, wasn't it? I thought I told you not to touch that stuff and that taking anything from those people would bring us bad luck. I, know, I, can't, I can't help it. I'm... When I see things, I just, I have to take them, collect them. It, it bothers me if I don't. I, I used to take meds for it. I mean, o OCD, I mean, but after the blackout. I... Dude, what about that guy? Yeah, look, I don't like it either, but he's dead. So let's get off the trail, find a creek to wade in to cover our tracks in case he was part of a group and make some headway before dark. We'll set up camp in a few hours and rest then. You guys haven't really talked about the war. What do you want to know? 
Well, are we winning? Not really. But no one really knows that much right now except how it started. How did it start? Well, they say that the Chinese launched a cyber attack. And then on the day of the blackout, they uh, launched 100 hypersonic ICBMs and detonated nukes in the atmosphere, frying almost every electrical device in the country. And then 10 million Chinese and Russian troops invaded Oregon and California. And they say Cuban and Venezuelan commandos invaded Florida too. And supposedly, they burned down Miami, and then they made their way up to Orlando before enough troops were mustered up to stop them. And while that happened, tactical nukes hit most of the uh, military bases on the plains and on the eastern seaboard. DC, Los Angeles, and New York were hit with nukes as well, probably uh, smuggled via shipping container. Now as for the West Coast invasions, well, reports are that one of the enemy brigade is a million strong. So they basically made it to Nebraska before a shot was fired by telling people on the West Coast that the uh, blackout was caused by a solar flare and that they were there to help the country get back up and running. And people believed them? Yeah, people believe anything they hear in the news. And the only source of news they had was from those radios the enemy were giving to them. I just don't understand why they would do this. Wasn't there a blackout in China six months before the blackout happened here too? No, that was all a ruse. So we'd let our guard down. But our goal now is to hold a line here at the Mississippi, stop them from crossing the river until we can muster up enough troops to stop them and fight back. Price? Yeah? When did you join the army? Right after the blackout. Uh, what did you both do before the blackout? I was a mechanic. Yeah, I worked for a small auto shop just uh, south of Traverse City, Michigan. And what about you? I got a PhD in classics. And I was looking for a teaching job at the college level. But I couldn't find one, so I mainly worked as a substitute teacher at a local high school. Where are you from? This, this crappy little college town called West Lafayette in Indiana. So we're all born and raised Midwesterners here, all trying to get home in our own ways. Yeah. Back home to the most beautiful woman in the world. Who's that? It's, uh, it's my fiance. Can I see her? She's pretty. Yeah, and an angel too. Most beautiful angel in the world. You know, I, I don't know what I'd ever do without her. Must be nice. What would be nice? To be in love. What, you're telling me you don't have some uh, handsome frat boy waiting for you back in Mississippi? I did, but I fell in love with someone else. So that's why you're going back? I don't know. Maybe, can we just talk about something else? Yeah, uh, let's, let's talk about what you missed most since the uh, blackout. Well, I could really go for a hamburger with no ketchup. Do you want cheese on yours? Yes. Dude, yes. Yes. Hey, hey, where did you get that? Sorry, this one is all mine. I want that hamburger. <laughs> no, what? Hey, wake up. Emily, wake up. Emily, wake up. Wake up. No, it's my cheeseburger. Wake up. Cheeseburger. It's my cheeseburger. Hey, wake up. Hey, wake up. Sorry I had to wake you. You're screaming out loud in your sleep. Oh, my God, I just had yeah, join the club. That's one thing that started for all of us since the blackout. I'm guessing you had a dream about uh, cheeseburgers? How did you know that? Because you kept screaming out for someone to give you a hamburger. Were we sitting, talking by the fire last night? Yeah, that's the, uh, that's the weird thing about those dreams. Reality and dreams, they just, uh, they seem to blend together and you literally have no memory of going to sleep. You know? And, uh, you know, some of them, just between us, they feel like I'm about to fall off a cliff into nothingness, never to wake up again. But I, uh, I wake up right as I'm about to fall into it. Yeah, that's how I felt just now. It's almost like morning sickness. Do you have kids? Uh, no. I was pregnant in high school, but I had a miscarriage halfway through the term. Um. Price, you waking up now? Yeah. Alright. 
Let's break down camp and head out then. I'll get the meal kits ready for us. All this talk about hamburgers making me hungry. So Emily, you are talking about how your dreams have changed. What did you dream about last night? Well, uh, we were sitting uh, at a campfire and talking about what we missed most since the blackout. No, that wasn't a dream. No, I, we actually were talking about that last night. But after that, I just woke up. Uh, I don't really remember anything else after that or even going to sleep. It's like I just slipped into the dream. Well, you said that the, the thing that changed the most for you was how time felt so different. How without electricity, everything moves slower. Without screens and television, there was nothing to distract us. And then you said, yeah, you know, you, you never felt so alive as you do now. And then you kind of wondered if maybe the power should never come back on at all. Because I feel at peace with the world around me. This place looks deserted. Just like all the other towns. Hello! Where the hell is everyone? This is the right way. We're here, right? Yeah, this is the place. It's just deserted. Maybe the people you're supposed to meet are somewhere else in the town. Yeah, maybe. You know what? I'm gonna find a, a roof on one of these buildings, survey the area, see if I can find out where. Yeah, that's a good idea, Rogers. Maybe check over there. Oh, sure. Have you used one of these before? No. I get the sink. Sewing it. Pack this back on the one shoe. Aim. Finger on the trigger. Pull the trigger. Don't shoot if you have to, okay? You two. Uh, you two have to be quiet. Otherwise, they'll hear you. They hit us with some new drone tech. Everyone's getting ordered to some decommissioned Air Force base in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Do you need help? No, don't worry about me. This is just a flesh wound. Who did this to you? Those things. We call them shriekers. They're able to control people, like drones, using the emergency supply bars. Where are the rest of your men? Most of them are dead. Some are secured in a bunker. But can you take us to the bunker? You can help me up. We'll lift you up, right? <sighs> Cover us, okay? Ah! Oh my God. Ah! 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 I think he stabbed me deeper than I realized. <sighs> All clear?
Hey, stop! Lower your weapon! Hey, you guys need to let me through, all right? My partner might be in trouble. What are you doing here? I'm with the 32nd Division out of Cairo. All right, we were redeployed to Dubuque in order to stop here first. We didn't find anyone, so I went to the roof to look for other units, while the other remaining person of my division went with the civilian to check the nearby area. Check his eyes. Normal dilation. All clear. One of our men went out to get gas for the generator and went missing about an hour ago. We were looking for him when we ran into you. I haven't seen him, but I heard gunshots. We did too. Not sure where they came from, but we'll find out soon enough. Let's go. This is Adams. Can anyone read me? I'm at the side entrance of the old theater downtown. Oh, there's a few shriekers outside trying to break in. Yeah, we know. Uh, we're not a lot of time to talk right now. Hendrickson, is that last hostile dead out there? No. One is still alive per the doctor's orders. Let's get him and bring him in. We know the dog doesn't want to put on a show once we get to the bunker. So where are you taking that one guy? That one guy's being taken to surgery for prep. You guys are going to go ahead and take Adams to the med tent. Corporal Hicks is going to show you where your living quarters are at. And here you will find the restroom, complete with Full shower and hot water. Hot water? <laughs> hot water. This is amazing. Now, you'll all have to bunk in the same room, but we have plenty of bunk beds for you also. That shouldn't be a problem. What the hell happened to everybody here? Well, if you had been here a few weeks ago, there was thousands of us stationed here. But after the butte got hit, then everybody started heading east and the shriekers started showing up. Only a few of us stayed here to help the doctor finish his research. Anyway, this is the mess hall down here. It's empty right now, but lunch is at 11, dinner's at 18. What's on the menu? Same thing as every day. Fortunately, though, because you guys are here, I think the doctor's going to put on a show for everyone in the theater. You guys have a theater here? We do. You want to see it? I'll take you there next. All right, just take a seat in the front row, and the doctor will be with you guys shortly. So, what do you guys think of all this? It's all just fucking weird if you ask me. Yeah, not what I was expecting. This here... is John Derby. He's from Castle Rock, Oregon, born in 1974. This poor man probably became hungry about three months ago. He ate one of those food emergency bars. Isn't that right, John? As you've probably seen, when one is infected, it will stop at nothing to attack, maim, and kill you. Unless you're wearing civilian clothes. That is why today, when you leave the base, you will discard your military outfits, and wear civilian clothes. Now, if you come across these creatures, they will share two things in common. They have a love, an addiction to these bars. They don't care if it affects their health or not. They don't care. Second, they're going to force you to eat one. They want to infect you with them parasitical nanobots hidden inside these bars that once inside your digestive tract will begin to build a neural interface 
inside your body that allows you to be controlled like a drone. If these creatures cannot persuade you to eat one, they will force you to eat one of these or wait till you're defenseless. One interesting thing before you start your journey, for some reason, music seems to interfere with them. I want you to watch this. See? Hey. Yeah. Oh. Where the hell am I? Oh. I can't see really well. It feels like someone has chained me to something. Can you, can you help me? Sure, I can help you, John. What's the last thing that you remember? I, I was home. I heard a noise. One of, one of those crates fell from the sky. I, re I remember looking through it, finding food, and then I, and then I just blacked out and w woke up here. And I'm hungry. I've never felt this hungry in my life. Finally, because this effect is only temporary, it only lasts until the music's over. The only cure for this affliction is unfortunately death. So what did you guys think of the show? Yeah, I can't believe that the enemy is growing those things in us. They're able to control us. Yeah, the first time I saw the doctor extract one, I can't believe it myself. We call those things squids. Keep this under wraps, but the doctor thinks that the enemy has complete control over them. They could infiltrate us, but we'd never even know they were part of them. Is there any word about how things are in Michigan? No. Uh, I'd assume it's as bad as it is here, but you know, who knows? I'm sure your fiance's flying mattress. I'm going to take a shower and get some rest. Uh, when can we see the general? First thing tomorrow morning. Emily, wake up! Mom, wake up. It's time to meet the general. Get ready. We're heading over to the general's office now. You should come with. Okay, uh, just give me a second. Emily asked Rogers what happened the previous night. Hey, um... About what happened last night. She appeared ashamed. Even confused. Rogers told her after we had dinner. We'd met with Hicks to get our civilian clothes. And then we had all met back in our room she had asked us how long it would take to get back home from here before everyone passed out. She'd had another one of those dreams. It blacked out to everything. I never did ask her what she dreamt about as we went to meet General Hyde. The general looked just like the doctor. And like him, one had to wonder if he had been recruited straight out of a lunatic asylum or deep out of some jungle. 
He made us wait in his office while he talked to someone about rosebuds. Now we live as we dream, alone. We heard him talking about how they planned to strike back at the Chinese and Russians with nukes. That all they needed was to get a platoon to a facility in South Dakota, and then they could win this war. And then he came in, and he told us he was providing us with a car for the rest of our journey. Then he briefed us on our mission. We were assigned to bring Emily home to her parents. And then we were to head to a base where we would meet with other units for the final push against the enemy. All right, here's your satellite phone. Just shake it for a minute and you have some power. Now, the general will text you with orders. You're to report anything you see. But I don't understand to take her home too. And then head north to Sawyer. Well, the general has you going through Oshkosh for reconnaissance purposes only. And that's just in case the troops stationed at McCoy have to fall back somewhere safe to lie low. It should all be there in your orders. You're going to have to drive at night, or when it's partly cloudy, to avoid being detected by their satellites. And what happens if we don't? Well, I can't say for sure, but what I can say is that anyone we sent up north who didn't follow those orders never returned. She's filled up and ready to go. I adjusted the clock so you'll know what time it is, and I put a post that reminds you what time not to drive. If there are storms or the sky is overcast, then it's okay to drive. doing? Yeah, just reporting back to the general that we saw nothing in the first hour. I'm gonna go take a piss. Roger that. It's a shame you can't use that to call your fiance. What's her name? Yeah, it is a shame. What about Price? What about him? I think he has a wife or girlfriend back home. Price? Have you heard the guy talk about books? No, <laughs> no Price is most definitely a virgin. What's up, guys? <laughs> Not much. We were uh, just talking about your love for uh, dead poets. Which one? Horace Hughes, remember? I love them all, man. Oh, we bet you do. Hey, uh, I had an idea. Remember how the Chinese were playing those oldies? Oh, yeah. Let's try it. What else there you one? go. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't know this one. I think we need to raise the stakes a bit. I vote for strip poker. Calm down. I think that, uh... Yeah, I think Price needs to start wagering that six-pack he brought from the bunker. Hey, you could both fuck yourselves. Besides, no drinking and driving. Seriously? Fine. Just one. Thank you. Can I have one? Hell no, you didn't win that game of poker. No point in thinking about tomorrow. The only thing any of us care about right now is living in the moment. Or at least for another hour. An hour is a big deal in a world like this. Wake up, Emily! Wake up! Emily! Wake up! Oh, oh God, what happened? You fell asleep. Yeah, you, uh, you sleep a lot. I've actually never seen anybody sleep so much. So what's the plan? Well, we're gonna drive through the night and, well, we should make it to Oshkosh by morning. Great. I can't wait to see my parents. What about your parents? Bunch of rich assholes. But I love them. They're in Europe when the blackout hit. They're probably fine. Yeah. Well, my dad died when I was little, and I never got to meet him. Cancer got my mom a few years ago. I'm sorry, that, that's sad. Oh, well, it's life. So what are you going to do when we drop you off? Well, I was thinking about that, actually. I, I, with everything that's going on, I don't know if it's safe to stay there. There really isn't anywhere that's safe right now. I was thinking Canada. I'd assume Canada was attacked, too. So there's just nowhere safe to go? Well, you're safe with us right now. Uh, yeah, but for how long? Put some music on, yeah? In the whole of your absurd past, you discover so much that's absurd. So much deceit and betrayal, 
that it might be a good idea to stop feeling young this instant. To wait for your youth to break away from you and pass you by. To watch it going away. Receding in the distance. To see all your vanity. Run your hand through the abyss it has left behind. Take one last look at it and then start moving forward. Make sure your youth has really evaporated. Then calmly, all by yourself, cross to the other side of time to see what people and things really look like. to park and head on foot from here. We'll come back to the car around 11.30. You guys hear that? Yeah, it sounds like a motorcycle. It's strange. Maybe it's one of ours. Maybe. You guys sure you wanna walk? Yeah, we got about six hours to burn. Maybe they're sleeping. Check the perimeter. Calm down, okay? All right, listen to me. The body's still warm, which means the killer might still be in the house, okay? Are you listening to me? Me and Rogers are gonna make sure the house is still clear. likely. Can we follow them? Maybe. I mean, well, it depends if the tracks continue where they are now. Wait, wait, wait. No, this is a war zone. It may be better to get the hell out of here. No. I want to kill whoever did this to them. Okay. Fine. We'll give you one day. One. If we don't find them by then, we're heading north to Sawyer with or without you. Got it? Looks like the trail ends here. We tried. Now let's cross the water and keep looking. Listen, we've been out here for eight hours now, all right? So it may be best to get back to the car. You promised to help me. I mean, we can give her till sundown. Fine.
Why? What is it? Smell that? Fire. Yeah, it looks like the trail's not so cold after all. Asian soldier by a campfire. Chinese paratrooper? Could be. But he's wearing a US Army uniform though. Could be a deserter. What do we do? I'm gonna message the general. Orders are to phone in anything unusual. Remember at the farmhouse? When I asked if I could join you and you asked if I meant the army? Yeah. Well, uh, could I still enlist? Of course. Um, just talk to Rogers about that later. All right, the general message back. They said find out what we can from the guy down there. Not, he thinks that Chinese paratroopers may be disguised like us and talk like us and put in places like these to control their aerial drones. All right, let's wait for nightfall and surprise them. Got it? Got it. Anything funny. Oh shoot, man. I'm not one of them. He asked if you're alone. Yeah, man, it's just me. Everyone in my company was killed by those things. What are you doing out here? I'm trying to stay alive. What about you? Don't worry about what we're doing. Where are you from? Missouri. A town in Missouri. I grew up in St. Louis, but was living in a town called Columbia when the blackout started. Tell us about it. It's kind of a shit of a place. I mean, there's this taco place there I worked at. Nothing much else there, to be honest. And what are you doing out here alone? The radio said to head east, so I volunteered to join and went east with a company of soldiers that drafted me. We were deployed up to McCoy, but when we got there, everyone was dead. I don't fucking believe you. Listen, man, I'm telling the truth. I'm gonna give you to the count of ten. And you're no good lying deserter ass is gonna tell me exactly what I wanna know. I'm gonna blow your fucking brains out. I'm not lying. Ten. Nine. What else do you wanna know? Eight. Seven. I was fat before a pandemic, like really fat. Six, five. I used to play World of Warcraft for hours on end. One time I played for 24 hours with my friends and all we ate was Fig Newtons and drank Dr. Pepper. I mean, I passed on my computer and my parents found me. Thought I was dead. Four, three, two. Seriously, I'm not lying. Please don't shoot me. I don't want to die. One. Okay, I believe. What is wrong with you? Oh, fucking shit. You killed my parents. We don't know that. They said Chinese paratroopers will look like us and, and act like us. We don't know if he was one of them. He could have been one of us. He killed my mom. You crazy fucking bitch. We were interrogating him. We were getting intel. Kill my dad. Yeah, congrats. The real killer could still be out there. Handle her. What's the point of this? I mean, why go on? You want to know who the real enemy is? The real enemy are the people who launched the EMP attack. They're the people who've been dropping those crates full of bars that turn people into killers. They're the people who invaded our country. What about him? Don't worry about him. I know he killed them. I know what you're going through. I'm tired. I know. We'll camp here tonight. We'll have to take turns watching the perimeter. What'd the general say? Sawyer's gone. What do you mean gone? Here, read it yourself. Fox. What's wrong? It says here that the place we were supposed to go, everyone there is assumed dead or compromised. Our orders have changed. We have to meet up with the platoon that has been walking from Washington, D.C. To do what? Well, they have the codes of the nukes. 
We have to help him get those codes to a facility in South Dakota. Then what? And the missiles fly. And then we get our revenge. We have a long day tomorrow. So, let's get something to eat, get some sleep. Price, you take first watch. There's something sad about people going to sleep sometimes. You can see they don't give a damn about whether they're getting what they want out of life or not. You see, they don't ever try to understand what we're here for. They just don't care. Not much music left inside of us for life to dance to. The youth has gone to the ends of the earth to die in the silence of the truth. And where, I ask, can man manage to escape to when he doesn't have any madness left inside of him? You fucking bitch, don't move and don't touch the fucking gun. What the? How many of you are there? Three. We're here on General Hyde's orders. We know. Who are you? Lieutenant Rogers. Okay, Lieutenant. Tell me, whose idea was it to light a fire with smoke so big you could be seen for miles out? That dead guy over there. Who killed him? I did. He gave you this sad story about him growing up in the States, being fat and playing video games? Yeah. Those things are just like shriekers, but much more advanced. They meant to infiltrate, look, and talk just like us. You think the enemy was experimenting on them months before the blackout. So he wasn't one of us? Probably not. Who are you guys? We're what's left of the 83rd Airborne out of DC. You know, our orders were to meet up with us in two days in Beaver Dam. We know. But you're here. The orders had fake coordinates in case our communications were compromised. We were about eight miles out when the general sent us to your direction. Smoke from your little fire did the rest. Do you guys have any of the enemy radios on you? Yeah, I've got one. Give it to me, and the one you're using to talk to the general. What do you need him for? In case they can track us with it. All right, all of you, get your stuff and let's go. Come on. Let's go. Move. Move it. I'm tired. I don't give a fuck if you're tired. Are you serious right now? So the three of you are civilians? Yeah. Price and I were drafted right after the blackout. Uh, I offered to enlist yesterday. All right. We'll take a break and rest over this way. Edwards, you check their supplies? They didn't have any. Uh, we left them in the car in Oshkosh. We'll make a supply run at the next town then. Oh. Wait. Where are you boys at? About two days east of the Mississippi. So the coast should be there in two weeks then? Yeah, assuming no more detours. Who's that? That was Sandra from Central Command, or what's left of it anyway. Never met her, but she's been giving us orders on where to go since DC. She still has access to satellites and been guiding us with the coast. We could strike back against the enemy. Truth be told, if it wasn't her, we wouldn't even be here right now. Sounds like a jet. Bryce, go check it out. All right. Where the hell is Price? We thought we heard a jet. A jet? saw a plane get shot down. I think it was one of ours. Nah, that's impossible. Maybe we should check it out, just in case the pilot's still alive. No, look, 
we can't deviate from the mission. Price, I want you to go check out the jet and then meet us at the river crossing in La Crosse. It's about a two days walk from here. If you can make it, you can rejoin us. If not, you're on your own. All right, let's move. Who are you with? I'm with the 32nd out of Cairo. I got redeployed by General Hyde. Now I'm with a platoon that's bringing the codes to fire the nukes back at the enemy. We're gonna get those fucking bastards. Let me try to stop the bleeding. Nukes. Trinity. Are you hearing this? Yes. It's worse than I feared. Is he safe? Okay. Good. Who are you with? I was sent to China on a recon mission. Fuck. When they had their blackout. The one before ours. But listen, that's not important. Take these. I need you to bring these to a CIA analyst named the Russian. He's in hiding on an island in Lake Superior called Howl uh, Royale. But I have my Fuck orders. Fuck your orders, Sergeant. The survival of the human race depends on you getting these to him. What about you? Don't worry about me. I'm as good as that. How do I find him? Where do I go? Trinity. Trinity. Well, guide you. Who's Trinity? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> the one. Um, Yes, it's Trinity? Yes, I need you to do me a favor. What? Do you have the bag and radio Commander Reeves gave to you? Yeah. Good. I need you to run north, right now, as fast as possible. You are not safe here. Satellite imagery shows hundreds of shriekers converging on this position. I'll fill you in later, once you reach safety. What is it? I thought I heard something. It might be that one motherfucker out of you three that's useful decided to show up. No, no, it's too soon for that. Look, there's nothing out there. Let's keep going. Come on. I go. Rogers? <laughs> Holy shit. So well, man. Hey, what the hell are you doing out here in the middle of nowhere? I was stationed at McCoy when it was overrun. <laughs> the shrieker got me. You know this soldier? Yeah, he grew up down the street from me. Help him up. Sounds like a storm's coming. There's a country house about a half mile down that path. I've been hiding there ever since McCoy went south. Went for a morning hunt. Shrieker jumped me. You guys are welcome to stay there if you want. We'll walk you there and patch your wound. 
The rest of you, eat and get some rest, but then we'll be on our way. Let's go. Uh. Up. Put some antibiotic cream on it, so hopefully it won't get infected. So hey, wait, when the fuck did you enlist, dude? I remember you were still helping out as a firefighter when I left. Yeah, I had to give that up though. About two months ago, it got real bad. There was looting. People were running out of food. I remember there was this one fire. We couldn't control it. It ripped through half the city in a day. Oh. That's when the platoon came in, headed for McCoy. I joined in with them, and by then, everyone else had really head up to refugee camps in Canada. And what about Emma? <laughs> Emma Smith died. <laughs> she died in a fire. Everyone died in the building. People were jumping from the windows, and. Everyone else burned alive, just trying to get down the stairs. Oh my god. Oh, uh, sorry, I didn't, I mean, shit. <sighs> she died in Mark Peter's apartment. Two of them, they were... They were what? Kind of fucking... No. Mm -mm, no, I, I asked her to marry me before I left. Oh, I'm sorry, man. There was... There's reports that the enemy killed everyone. She probably thought you... And you know Mark. He doesn't take no for an answer. I lost her? I fucking lost her. I came out here to fucking save her when I should have been there. What the hell is going on here? Fiance died. Fuck. My wife died too. Just as soon as the blackout hit. I get what you're going through, but you need to bury that shit until this mission is over. That's in order. Come on. Oh. No point in shedding tears for a whore, right? <sighs> Shit. I, I wouldn't have brought it up if I knew she meant something to him. I thought they just weren't together anymore. No, it's, it's not your fault and you didn't know. Honestly, it's, it's better that he finds out now rather than a year or two from now when he goes home and finds her with someone else. <sighs> Still. I feel bad for the guy. I shot it. I had to put at least 20 rounds in it, but it was like I was shooting blanks. It cut his throat. Look, get your shit together, soldier. Look, secure the house. Edwards, you're Rogers. Move! Kitchen's clear! Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Yeah, just like Indiana. What the hell happened in Indiana? One of the shriekers cut Thompson's throat and slipped the squeeze inside. Things took control of him in seconds and started attacking us. So how'd you kill him? You gotta shoot him in the neck, where the spine meets the brain. It's the only way to take him down.
Don't worry about it. You motherfuckers! Did you kill me to die? Just trust me. I'm here for now. Can I? Yeah. Storm's finally passed. So freezing. We'll head on a bit, try and find a house, and we'll warm up in there. Have you been up this whole time? Yeah. Just making sure there's no more shriekers. Have there been any? No, nothing. I think it's safe. Get here. I don't know. God damn it, I had another one of those dreams again. Okay, I I remember the car. Did we I think I'm pregnant. Here, you can feel it kicking. Have you been pregnant this whole time? No. I just became pregnant this morning. You're the father. Feel it. Can't you feel our baby growing? Sleep okay? I had the most horrible dream. Yeah, let me toss in the Um, in the car last night, 
Did we, uh... Did we what? Ah, oh, never mind, um... I just had this dream where we, uh... We kissed. No. You fell asleep, you woke up, we walked for a few miles and came to this house. Slept on the couch out there. Hopkins, you there? Yeah, Hopkins is dead. And they're all dead. We were ambushed by a shrieker. Who is this? This is Lieutenant Rogers. Do you have the codes? Yeah, Hopkins gave them to us. Good. I'll guide you on where you need to go. I need you to head west now, and don't stop for anyone or anything. Where do you go? worst part is wondering how you'll find the strength tomorrow to go on doing what you did today and have been doing for far too long. Will you'll find the strength for all the stupid running around for relationships that come to nothing. Which always founder and serve only to convince you one more time that destiny is implacable. That every night will find you down and out, crushed by the dread of more and more sordid and insecure tomorrows. But perhaps that is what we seek throughout life. That and nothing more. The greatest possible sorrow so as to fully become ourselves before dying. What was it Bryce once said when he quoted a poet named Rilke? That a person is only complete once they are dead? Make sure you're dead. Thanks for me. After all, I guess you can lose your way Groping among the shadows of the past, trying to find a self that's no longer there. It's frightening how many people and things are in the man's past that have stopped moving. The living people we've lost in the crypts of time sleep so soundly side by side with the dead that the same darkness envelops them all. What's up, buddy? Hey, how are you doing? Good. What are you doing here? Gonna run, but uh, good running in. As we grow older, we no longer know whom to awaken, the living or the dead. Sure, you still look for excuses for starting over and trying again, but death is there too, stinking, right behind you. It's there the whole time. The only thing you continue to value, petty regrets, like not finding time to run away and see, see Emma while she was still alive. The one who died forever one evening, forgotten, ashes. And a horrible little regret is all we have left of life. We vomited up the rest along the way. We're nothing now but a flickering street lamp full of memories on a street where hardly anyone passes anymore. The time comes when you're all alone, when you've come to the end of everything that can happen to you. It's the end of the world. Even grief, your own grief, doesn't answer you anymore. And could I be the last person on Earth? How terrifying. All alone with billions of stark raving madmen. Shut up on Earth with them as if it were a loony bin. 
and they were ready to demolish everything that breathes. A pretty mess we're in. No doubt about it. This crusade I let myself in for was the apocalypse. And the only way out was forward. How are we going to get across? We said anything about crossing. But what about the codes? What about price? We were supposed to meet him here. She said not to stop for anyone. Yeah. A girl on the radio we never met wants to end the fucking world. She can go fuck herself. If she wants to deliver those codes, she can do it herself. I'm tired of fighting other people's battles, other people's wars. I'm just I'm tired too. Do you think Price is still alive? I guess we'll find out soon. Hey, I thought I heard something. I'm gonna go check it out. I fell asleep. I woke up to the sound of a gunshot and he isn't here. I told you not to stop for anyone or anything. I know, but he wanted to wait for Price. He may be a shrieker then. Was he acting weird? I mean, he was talking a little funny. You are in danger then. Do you still have the codes? Yes, he, he left them here with the radio. Good. I need you to take them and head west now. Oh, sh shouldn't I wait and see? No, you have to run. Until you are safe, don't stop for anyone or anything. When a person can hate without risk, their stupidity is easily convinced. The motives supply themselves. Maybe I'd never see Rogers again. Maybe he was gone for good. Swallowed up. Body and soul and the kind of stories you hear about. Uh, it's an awful thing. Being young doesn't help any. When you notice for the first time the way you lose people as you go along, the people you'll never see again, never again. When you notice that they've disappeared like dreams, that it's all over, finished, that you too will get lost someday, a long way off, but inevitably. In the awful torrent of things and people, of the days and shapes that pass, that never stop. But later on, when life shows us how much cunning, cruelty, and malice are required, we catch on. We begin to understand the amount of putridness it takes to make up a past. Just take a close look at yourself and what you've come to. There's no mystery about it. No more room for fairy tales. If you've lived this long, it's because you've squashed any poetry you had in you.
Sandra, I'm here. Where are you? I'm in a safe place. I will walk you through what to do. What? I thought I was giving the codes to someone else. No, I need you to enter them in the main console. Can you do that for me? Uh, okay, um, yeah, yeah, sure. Type in the codes. What is this place? I thought I was launching missiles. Don't two people actually have to turn the keys at the same time to launch a missile? No, the codes are to deactivate a program that is preventing us from launching them remotely. Okay. It says, Project Trinity deactivated. What should I do now? Sandra? Sandra! I told you. Well, I just launched the codes. I saved the world. No, you just destroyed it. But come with me if you really want to save it. Explain everything later. What just happened? This bike's a time machine. <laughs> Went back in time a couple hours. Why? How was that even possible? What? I'll explain everything. What? After I found the pilot, he gave me a radio, and that's when I met Trinity. Who's Trinity? Am I safe yet? Yes, for now. So can I rest? No. <laughs> yes, you can rest. So who are you? You with the CIA too? Open the bag, please. Do you see anything that looks like a contact lens case? Put them on. This isn't some enemy technology that will put a squid in me. No, this is technology developed by the Department of Defense. It will augment reality so you can see things that aren't really there. How do I look? You're beautiful. So are you. How is this even possible? It's because I'm not real. I'm an artificial intelligence program that was created to protect America from advanced and unexpected threats. Unreal. You wouldn't believe the things Reeve saw in China? Like what? What is happening here happened there a year ago. They thought it was the Americans invading and the Russians dropping emergency food supplies to them. I don't understand. I, we've been fighting the Chinese. No, we haven't. About a year and a half ago, a Chinese radio telescope made first contact with an extraterrestrial civilization. They thought they were downloading a benign message from an Encyclopedia Galactica, but instead they downloaded an alien artificial intelligence. It quickly hid itself on the web. Using simulated communications of real people in charge, it was able to deep fake its way into getting a Chinese factory to develop squid technology and distribute it to people in food. After that, it was just a matter of time before it grew powerful enough to take full control. Once it had control of the military, it knocked the power out throughout China and assimilated the entire population over the next few months. So the blackout in China was the same as the one here? Yeah. Reeves was sent there to find out what happened. Only in China, things are much worse than they are here. How could they be worse? 
Reefs found factories full of pregnant women in Shanghai. They were giving birth to things, not human. So this is an alien invasion? Yes. They have been using misinformation to get us to turn against each other. And while we are busy fighting enemies that do not exist, they are taking over our bodies using the squids and then downloading an alien consciousness to them. That is what the radios they drop are for. They embed the data in the music and it slowly downloads to each one. Once the data downloads, the human inside is gone and the alien takes over. By my calculations, over 99.9% .9 of the human race has already been assimilated. So there's only a few of us left? Yes. But you still have a chance to beat them. It doesn't sound like we have much of a chance. We do. Follow me. We have to travel by boat now. There's a pier at the end of the speech. We have to go there. So why do they call this guy the Russian? He's actually of Scottish and Irish descent, but with a love for Russian literature. Interesting. And he's gonna save the world? No, you are. But we need him to activate something that will allow you to complete your mission. My mission? The CIA hid people in select locations in the event of an attack like this. The Russian was assigned to a safe house on the island of Isle Royale. That's where we're going. Looks like they found the codes to the silo. Yes. The codes deactivated my program that was preventing the alien AI from launching the missiles. It looks like they are now bombing anywhere there may still be any human resistance. But how are you still here if you've been deactivated? A copy of me is on the device you're carrying. That's all that's left of me. Doesn't look like anybody's here. Hello? 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 A friendly! What are you doing here? Trinity sent me. Trinity was deactivated. Hi, Roger. No, I was able to download my core to the computer in his bag before they entered the codes. Okay. Let's go upstairs. We need to download her. It's something I've been working on. Roger, we need the keys for Project Philadelphia. What's Project Philadelphia? Back in the 1950s, we experimented with time travel. Not very successfully at first. The first pioneers didn't realize that in order to travel back through time, we would have to travel through both time and space. They didn't account for the Earth's motion. They found themselves lost in the cold vacuum of space. But we were able to fix that issue. Essentially, we built a time machine that allows us to go back in time a few days. 
Basically, the purpose of the program was to go back in time and tell Trinity, in case we ever got nuked, the exact time and coordinates of the missiles so that we could knock them out of the sky. So we go back in time and change things so the squids can't take over? No, it's too late for that. The Philadelphia Project only has enough energy to travel back a week in time. We're going to try to create a temporal paradox instead that will unravel space and time as we know it and create enough energy that will allow me to travel back in time by years. Once there, I can destroy the Chinese radio telescopes and send a message to everyone about the alien threat, thus preventing the squids from ever being downloaded. This way, we save everyone in the world. Essentially, it's like, uh, it's like a rubber band. If you create a paradox, you should be able to generate enough force that breaks reality as we know it, and time resets. Now, all of us may still remember this reality as we transition into a new one, but we'll remember it as if we were waking up from a dream, one that we will all soon forget once time resets. Eventually, everything we just experienced will just disappear. Time will disappear. It will be like none of this ever happened. Here, eat this. What is this? It's similar to the technology the squids use. It will allow Trinity to bond with you, allowing you to travel back in time without your mind being ripped to pieces. Trust me, take it. It has some perks. Perks you won't believe until you've experienced them. Now, oh, it was a pleasure to meet you. Look at the bright side. If your mission is successful, you will wake up feeling a couple years younger. Now, go out there and save the world. This is a time machine? Yeah, they converted several hundred motorcycles into them and hid them throughout the country. This was the closest one. I'm taking control of your hands and entering the date, time, and spatial coordinates in for you. Why? So we don't wind up in outer space. Time travel is a tricky business. Who created this technology? It was a student of the physicist John Wheeler. He joined the Department of Defense and worked on a theory that viewed time as an emergent force of subatomic nature, a reality that we experience directly every time we go to sleep. Essentially, the true nature of quantum time is like a dream, and when enough mass and energy is compressed on the subatomic level, you can change it from a quantum state to a waking state, which opens a doorway, a white hole, a wormhole to all possible points in the past and future. Heisenberg's uncertainty principle and Kantian ideality disintegrate, and the true nature of quantum entanglement reveals itself. The entire universe around us is one and the same. The same electron, the same positron. It is just configured in a certain way which creates a unique point in space and time. And by changing the state of that one subatomic particle, you can change the entire universe around you. He used this theory to build the first time machine using a DeLorean car in Princeton, New Jersey. They eventually found you could travel farther back in time with less mass. So they switched the design from cars to motorcycles. These ones were created about eight years ago, in 2022. Okay, I'm done inputting the coordinates. Okay, where are we going? We're going to Emily's parents, before you arrived, to save them before they are murdered. The temporal paradox from that should create enough force to slingshot me back in time to 2028. How do I activate it? Just drive down a road and I'll handle everything else. Hold on, hold on tight.
Well, what am I supposed to do now? We'll have to save her parents before he kills them. So I just tell them I'm from the future, I know your daughter, and listen to me if you want to live? Basically. Okay. Well, it was open the last time we were here. That's a good sign. Hello? That's odd. What is? The door opening. Yeah. Hey. So, you saw my parents? Yeah, but when I got there, Alan had already killed them. Did you see Alan kill them? Yeah, but they were sleeping. They didn't feel a thing. I wish I could go back and see them one more time. You can if this mission is successful. But anyway, after that? We've not changed anything. What has happened here already happened. There is no paradox. Your past self will arrive here in about 20 minutes. And if you two meet, it'll cancel out everything we're trying to do. In order to travel back several years in time, we need to create a special type of paradox. What then? You need to head out through the back and head to where that man in the woods is so that you can create the tracks your past self followed. In the meantime, I will analyze your memories and figure out where we need to travel to in the past. I figured out where we need to go. Where are we? Where you're supposed to meet everyone. By the Mississippi River near La Crosse. Hey. Roger? Price? How you doing, buddy? Not fucking good, man. What's wrong? Emma. a favor, yeah? I left Emily back there. Just follow the river. And, uh, take care of her for me. I'm sorry. I didn't know he would be in this type of emotional state. The last time you saw him, his psychological profile suggested he was... Strong. Asshole sometimes. But he was a good person. Who do his word? We have to go. There's only one chance that remains. We have to find Emily after she puts the coats in, and we have to convince her future self 
to murder her past self before the codes are entered. That will create a singularity with enough power to spiral me back in time several years. So that's what you need me to do? Yeah. I just don't think I can actually kill myself. Just think of your family. Think of Rogers. Think of all the friends you lost along the way. How do I, um... How do you kill yourself? Yeah. Well, that's the easy part. But you won't be shooting yourself. You'll be shooting your past self. <laughs> if that makes any sense at all. Well, um, actually, as strange as it may sound, I think I can do it. Came by over here? Yeah, uh, I should be walking through there in about 15 minutes. So, uh, what'll happen after we do it? Well, Trinity said it would be like a dream, but we'll wake up in the past. Will we remember any of us? Will we remember each other? Maybe, but it'll be like a dream. So we'll remember it for a little while, but then it'll slip away. Like it never was. Like life slips away. Yeah. Maybe that's all life is. A dream. It's you. Yeah. I told you. You sure you can do this? Yeah. It's from his parents. For Rogers. For the whole damn world. Emily, what's wrong? What happens in the past will mirror itself into the future. She just killed herself. I have to say goodbye to you now, Bryce. Why? I have to prepare myself for the jump through time. Will I see you in the past? After this all resets? Maybe. Did we save the world? Yeah, we did. So it would come soon and everyone would be alive. Yeah, we should. I'd like that. I would too. You're a good person, Bryce. So are you. You know, it's had the craziest thing. You know. What if... This is one of those. Dreams.